Welcome back to the Manja Kitchen. If you haven't been here before, where have you been? If you have been here, we do a lot of different subject matter all about food. These are not long drawn out how to make a recipe, how to follow them. What I like to do is, since we're living in strange times these days, is to take your basic recipes and kind of hack them down. In other words, make them simplified for you using pantry ingredients you have in the house or stuff that, you know, just lying around. Open your fridge. What do you got in there? Whip it out and let's see what we can do with it. I don't want you to make sophisticated recipes. Yes, we can. And maybe when COVID is over, we will do some sophisticated recipes, but not now. So I'm going to be doing classes or these, uh, you know, the recipes here on the show that you can make quite simply and stuff that maybe you already do make, but you'd like to maybe find an easier way to do it. So right now we're going to talk about butters. Butter, butter to me is a basic food group along with dark chocolate, 72% or better, or maybe scotch or rye or... What else would, uh, maybe olive oil, garlic. I don't know. You know, I have my own food groups and I'm sure you do too. Probably the FDA wouldn't approve of mine, but butter is it. In our personal house, we go through at least minimum two pounds of butter a week. Now for two people, sounds excessive, huh? Well, my cardiologist doesn't have a problem with it and neither do I. It's real product. It's not margarine. So it doesn't have additives and it doesn't taste like Pens oil? It doesn't taste terrible, but you have to use good quality butter. So be careful of what you buy, read the package, and do a little research on the internet to see what kind of butter and how it's produced and what kind of cows. Sometimes even it'll get down to cows. So I'm doing flavored butters today to kind of vary up what you usually make. So if you make, say, for example, pasta, you know, we do pasta on Sundays in our house. We're Italian. And I make a garlic butter, which is this little container here. I make my own garlic butter, and the recipes will be easily uh, on the screen. Now, it's a little loose now because it's been ungodly hot here for the last four days. And everything I'm going to make does not require a lot, uh, an oven to make it because it's just too damn hot to turn it on. So the garlic I make in the butter here is chopped up garlic and if you haven't seen the show you should probably get on in one of our earlier shows and when I show you how to make garlic chop it up put it in a jar seal it with more olive oil on top it stays indefinitely in your refrigerator and you just scoop it out as you need it you're not going to be sitting there chopping up garlic every time you need a clove of garlic so this is chopped garlic a little bit of dried parsley Here's a hint on that. You would think because I'm such a snob about my food, I'd want fresh parsley. Not in this one. No. It would get moldy or it would turn on you. So you want the dried parsley in here. Also, something I put in here is something you probably would not think about. See how loose this is? This is making it it's spreadable because there's olive oil in here too. I use really great quality olive oil to make it spreadable so it's easy if you take it out of the fridge to let it come to room temperature to use it on a piece of bread. Well, within 15 minutes you can put it on there. You know, you go, oh my God, I forgot to take out the garlic butter. Well, you can use it that way. I like to use garlic butter not only on bread. I like to put it on a good, nice, big ribeye like, you know, like raw, like re really black and blue, black on the outside, charred rare. Now, not a lot of people won't eat it that way, but you know, I'm a carnivore. I'm going to eat it that way. With a good glass of scotch or rye, hey, what a meal, right? So let me show you what I do here. So when you go to cut your bread, always a serrated knife. If you have a good knife like this, it makes life a lot easier. And I just cut it down the side. And then you flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. There's a natural seam there you can follow. And it comes out really easily. And then just spread it apart. And it, you know, just simple like that. Now, this is just regular old grocery store bread. You don't have to go to a special bakery. But if you have one in your town, I'd recommend you do that. It's all about the smell. 
good bread. This is sourdough and I like sourdough probably the best because it has the lowest sugar content. I will, I'm saying that because some of our other shows coming up here are solid sugar. It's going to be a vein rush, but right now less on here. You got to balance this crap out, right? Good, bad, whatever. Okay, so what I do with this is to, I take the garlic butter and I just, and I'm not cheap with it. Don't be cheap with your butter. I mean, come on, you know, there's few things in life that you really can really go overboard on and you should in this. You can see the chunks of garlic in here. See the chunks? And that's bread too. And you just slather it on here just as much as you want to all the way to the sides and just sprinkle it with a little bit of grated parmigiana just like this no big deal it gives it a really good quality now on top now here's a trick i learned this years ago in culinary school this container look at how old this container is i mean this thing is like it i know how old it is it's as old as my daughter it's 52 years old and the reason i keep it it's kind of nostalgia but you know she's an adult with grandchildren hard to believe but I keep this container because it reminds me of her when she was a baby. So I guess I'm kind of a sap when it comes to that. So what I do on here, let me move this for Rich so he can see this. I put on par, uh, this paprika on top of here. Now when it goes to put in your broiler or your oven, what happens is it turns brown. So then you'll get a nice hue, a golden hue on this. And that's what paprika does. Paprika is a chili. It actually is a real chili. It's a fresh chili, but they dry them over ash embers, like real wood fires. And what happened, they don't have any spice in them at all. So they're not hot like a, a chili, like a jalapeno or serrano would be. There's just no flavor. All it's good for is actually, you know, make making something look better. You think of deviled eggs. What do you put on a deviled egg, right? Paprika. It looks good. It's appealing. You eat with your eyes. People, if, if it's shiny, you'll eat it. If it looks good, you'll eat it. If it, you know, you could put paprika on Alpo, it would be probably just as good for the dog would probably like it too. So this is garlic butter. Now I made a couple more different kinds of butter to share with you. This one I always keep in the house and these are all in containers I keep. This is not fancy, you notice. I, I didn't break, uh, break out the Haviland for this one. This is honey maple butter. And I, on a previous show, we did a whole segment on maple, uh, maple syrups and the grades and qualities of maple syrup. So this is honey and a little bit of maple, predominantly hunt, uh, the maple syrup. And I use this on maybe biscuits or maybe on a cornbread or something. You could use it on vegetable. I mean, it, it, it's believe it or not, it's really good on asparagus. It doesn't sound like it would be, but on grilled asparagus, it's pretty good. It gives a certain nuance. So this is another one I use, which is that. And then the last one I made is a sun-dried cheese, cheddar cheese, and uh, butter. And it's got some uh, chopped up, uh, what else did I put in here? Parsley again, more olive oil. And this goes on like baked potatoes. And it's great on baked potatoes, vegetables, and of course bread. So also when nobody's around, this is my usual trick. I don't want people to know I do this because this is probably not cool, right? So what do we do? We just dip it in here. Yes, we are defiling the, the vessel here, but hey, nobody's watching us, right? Not bad, garlic. How can you go wrong with garlic? <clears throat> Ooh, boy. <clears throat> Kick ass. Try some garlic butter. Try the maple butter. Try the cheddar and uh, cheddar cheese and sun-dried tomato. Ooh, oh, this is really good. I really made this. This is decent stuff. By the way, this all three of these last in your refrigerator indefinitely. You'll be gone. The kids will clean out the refrigerator when you're dead. And they'll say, what the hell is this? That's why you got to do stuff like this. Label it. You'll never know. You don't need to date it because, like I said, it'll last indefinitely. Come back and join us again. Love to have you. And too bad you're not here because you could be doing this with me too. Mmm, yummy. Good stuff.